one member of the Sangha Sutra. One of the Sangha asked the Master, who got the principle of Huang Mei? The Master replied, the one who understands the Buddha Dharma. The Sangha member said, Han Master, have you obtained it? I do not understand the Buddha Dharma, the Master replied. Commentary, this member of the Sangha was truly a barbarian, an uneducated savage. He rudely confronted the master and asked, Who got the robe and bowl of the fifth patriarch Hong Chen of Huang Mei? He knew very well that the sixth patriarch had it, but he asked anyway. From this, he, we know that among those who came to the master for instruction, there were rude country peasants as well as good disciples. He knew that his question was insulting to the master, and what he meant by it was, you can't even read. How can you be worthy of the robe and bow? The master said, one who thoroughly comprehends the Buddha drama obtains that principle and the fifth patriarch's robe and bow. But high master, the bishop said, have you got it or not? He didn't believe that the master had received the transmission. The sixth patriarch didn't say yes, and he didn't say no. He simply said, I don't understand the Buddha drama. What did you think? Was he telling the truth? Bishu Fang Pian Sutra, one day the master wanted to wash the robe which he had inherited, but there was no clear stream nearby. He walked about two miles behind the temple where he saw good energies involving, revolving in a dense grove of trees. He shook his staff stuck it in the ground and a spring bubbled up and formed a pool. Commentary, the master walked about two miles behind the temple where he found a luxuriant grove filled with tall trees and good vibra vibrations. People who have opened their five eyes and obtained the six spiritual powers can tell at a glance the geomantic properties of any particular piece of land. So, when the master planted his tin staff in the ground, the nine metal rings which are hung from the head of his staff echoed through the wood and a spring gushed forth to form a clear pure pool. The public washing stream is about a third of a mile behind Nanhua Temple, whether this present stream is the same source that was used during the Sikh Patriarch's time is uncertain. Sutra, as he knelt to wash his robe on a rock, suddenly a monk came up and bowed before him, saying, I am Fang Pian, a native of Sishu. A while ago I was in India, where I visited the great master Bodhidharma. He told me to return to China immediately, saying the Orthodox Dharma I treasury and the Samgati rope, which I inherited from Mahakashyapa, has been transmitted to the sixth generation of Tsao Tzu Shao Chou. Go there and pay reverence. Go there and pay reverence. Fang Pian has come from afar, hoping to see the rope and bow that his master transmitted. The master showed them to him and asked, Super real one, what work do you do? I am good at sculpting, he replied. Keeping a straight face, the master said, Then sculpt something for me to see. Fang Pian was bewildered, but after several days, he completed a life, lifelike image of the patriarch, seven inches high and wonderful in every detail. The master laughed and said, You only understand the nature of sculpture. You do not understand the nature of the Buddha. Then the master stretched out his hand and rubbed the crowd of Fang Pian's head, saying, You will forever be a field of blessing for gods and humans. The master rewarded him with a rope, which Fang Pian divided into three parts. One he used to wrap the sculpture, one he kept for himself, and the third he wrapped in palm leaves and buried in the ground, vowing in the future when this rope is found again, I will appear in the world to, the, to be abode here and restore these buildings. 
Note, during the Song Dynasty in the 8th year of the Chia Yu reign period, 1063 AD, while Bishu Wei Xian was repairing the hole, he excavated the, the earth and found the rope which was like new. The image is a cow trunk temple and those who pray before it obtain a quick response. Commentary, think about it, Bodhidharma had long since died in China, but Bishu Fang Pian met him in India. That is not surprising, however, because to this day no one knows exactly what happened to Bodhidharma. I will now tell you a true story. While I was living in Manchuria, I decided for various reasons to live the whole life and cultivate the way. The man I most respected was Wang Xiao Tzu, filial son Wang. When he was 28 years old, his mother died and he practiced filial piety by sitting beside her grave. He built a small hut out of grass, scrap lumber to protect himself from the bitter Manchurian cold and lived there for three years. According to the Confucian custom, when the first three years were up, he decided to stay for another three years, so in all he practiced for six years. During the second three-year period, he did not speak, no matter who came. Every day he sat in his hut, meditating and reciting the Diamond Sutra. Toward the end of the sixth year, he had a daydream. In Chien and Kuang Ling, Mountains, he thought, there are cultivators who live for over a thousand years. When I fully my filial obligations, I go there to cultivate. The following morning, during meditation, he heard a Dharma protector say, Today, an important guest will visit you. He thought perhaps a great official was coming, and he waited until 10 o'clock when he saw a monk approaching, wearing rug robes and carrying a bamboo stick. Fido San Wang did not speak out loud, but in his mind he wondered, where is he from? The monk replied, I'm from Kuang Ling Mountain. Fido San Wang then thought, what is his name? The monk told him his name and added, in the Ming Dynasty I was a general and later I left home to cultivate. We to have a comic affinity for one another. And so when I heard that you wanted to go to Kuang Ling Mountain, I felt I should advise you that the monks there cultivate solely for their own benefit. You, on the other hand, on the other hand, should cultivate for the good of all. After you have finished your act of filial piety, build a temple right here and spread the Buddha drama. Now, Philo Sam Wang hadn't spoken to the monk, and yet the monk read the questions in his mind. That shows that the monk had the spiritual power of knowing others' thoughts and had obtained the five eyes and six spiritual penetrations. He said he was from the Ming Dynasty. Philo Sam Wang lived during the first years of the Republic. Some 300 years later, so you see that Bodhidharma could easily have been seen in southern India several hundred years after his disappearance from China, that he met Fang Pian there and told him about the rope and bow is a very ordinary matter, nothing strange at all. Bishu Fang Pian knew how to make Buddha images. He carved them in wood and molded them in clay. The master very solemnly said to him, Please come to an image for me to see. Caught off guard, Fang Pian just stood there in silence. But a few days later, he had finished making a true image of the patriarch. It looked just like the master. The nose, ears, eyes, all the features were exactly right. It was a perfect likeness right down to the finest detail. When the master saw the little statue of himself, he couldn't help but smile. Fang Pian, he said, you may know how to model clay, but you don't know how the Buddha nature. You don't know the Buddha nature. In any case, you should leave a home in every life, become a big shoe, and act as a field of blessing for humans and gods. Master Wu Lun's 
verse. Sutra Wan Bishu was reciting Dhyana Master Wu Lun's verse. Wu Lun has the talent to stop the hundred thoughts. Facing situations, his mind won't move. Body grows by day by day. When the master heard it, he said, This verse shows no understanding of mind crowd, and to cultivate according to it will increase one's bondage. Then he spoke this verse. Hui Neng has no talent to stop the hundred thoughts. Facing situations, his mind often moves. How can body grow? Commentary. The name of the reciter of Wu Lun's verse is not given. Perhaps he had no name, or perhaps he didn't want to be famous. Dhyana Master Wu Lun could cut off his thoughts, but Wu Lun himself, the cutter of the thoughts, cutter of thoughts, still remained. Thus, he had fallen into the second or third position. He was not in the first position. Upon hearing Wu Lun's words, the great master replied, I haven't a single talent, nor even the thought of cutting off thought. My mind responds in a natural way. Who cares whether body grows or not? Here he expresses the same principle as in the verse he wrote while still a layman at Huang Mei. Originally, there is not one thing. Where can the dust alight? The absolute is pure. What need? Is there to dust it off?